Alrighty, so in this video we're going to be looking at the Kaiweets DC lab power supply. This is 3010DF. This is a, a, a nice lab supply for on the bench for if you're doing um, experimental or uh, electronic testing. So this version is a 10 amp power supply, 30 volts. It'll go up to, it's also got a USB output as well, which will do uh, 5 volt charging. But anyway, let's open it up and we'll have a look. Okay, peel away some foam. So looks like we've got some test leads here, which, uh, oh, we've got some, what are they, multimeter probes as well that have come with it. So you get some alligator clip test leads and also some multimeter probe test leads. Yeah, there's the front panel. We've got our voltage coarse and fine adjustments, uh, the constant current coarse and fine for adjusting the, the amps. Uh, we've got a USB output, which is two amps. Uh, power button and we've got all of our terminals along the bottom here um, it's pretty yeah it's pretty small like I didn't expect it to be this lightweight and tiny um, got the fan 220 volts at the back a uh, little dip switch that we can change to 120 I think as well and then the Australian plug which is on the back but you can also buy these um, for US or or elsewhere so let's plug this up and we'll have a look at it in operation. So yeah, 28, what have we got? We can, so we can adjust the voltage up and down. A little bit of a delay in the adjustment of the voltage, but that's okay. You can, oh yeah, adjust fine. Um, obviously we're not drawing any current at the moment. Let's put this on to 13.8. Now if we get our Kiwi's came 601 meter, 13.77, pretty good. Um, and then if we adjust this up, you can see it going up. So we get to about 30 point, if I adjust the fine, looks like it maxes out at about 32. And in actual fact, yeah, that's what the front of the, front of the power supply says is 32. So if we also now, if we put in our test probes here, we should be able to short these out and we'll be able to have a look at the constant current function. I'll just plug these test leads in. If I join these together, you can see here now we've got our current. Oh, that's cool. I didn't notice that. So it's actually got a watt meter at the bottom as well. So you can see how many watts it is. So we can, uh, we can adjust current up, so there's 10 amps, and obviously we're not, we've got no, uh, no load on here, but just uh, showing the, the short circuit current and it's dropped the voltage right down. Searching for a five volt device, and the only thing I can find is my, uh, my little boom box here. So I wonder if this, if I charge this up, is that okay so it charges but it doesn't show on the meter itself so let's have a quick tear down and we'll have a look and see what is inside this box so um yeah very lightweight let's pull some of these screws off and have a look don't miss one screw all right the top is now off and it looks like we've got a fair bit going on there, a lot of switching stuff. PCB actually looks very, very good. It looks like, yeah, the bit of surface mount stuff, everything looks really clean, looks well wound. Um, no sort of, nothing that sort of stands out that I can see here that looks like it's of bad quality. Not sure if this um, gives out any RF noise. I wouldn't use this to run any radios um, just because this is obviously a switching power supply and I don't reckon that it's probably all that RF quiet. I'd have to do some more testing uh, for those who are interested in that. But for running for a bench supply for powering uh, equipment and and experimentation and you know building circuits and stuff, it looks, it looks uh, like that it'll be fine for that. Just looking down in here now, looks like there's bit of heat gunk just down in there. Not sure if you can see that. Um, I think that's sitting on a, looks like a thermistor, I think. 
Yeah, yeah. So I think there's a thermistor there, and the heat transfer compound is onto the heat sinks there, so that it can measure the temperature. A um, little bit messy, but you know, seen worse. So at the time of recording this video, the Kiwi's PS three hundred one zero F DC power supply is ninety nine dollars and eighty nine cents. It looks like it is currently on sale down from 110. Now I will leave a link in the description below for purchasing one of these. If you use the code HR10, then you do get a exclusive 10% discount on this particular product and all of Kai Wheat's products in fact. So just going down here quickly, you could see here that there's all of the different features of this uh, power supply. One of the main th features of uh, bench power supplies, which you really want is uh, protection. So it's got protection from over voltage, over current, over temperature, overload, and short circuit protection. Uh, perfect for DIY electronic repairs, perfect for uh, adjustable voltages when you need that. Uh, it's also got the USB interface, the 5 volt, as we mentioned, 2 amp USB interface. It weighs 4.1 pounds. So, what's that? That's about, about 2.5 kilos, I think. So uh, I didn't even hear the fan spin up at all. So I wasn't drawing much current, so I can't comment on how the loud the fan is. But it looked like a fairly small fan, so I don't think it's going to be that loud. One thing it says here that's interesting that it is low ripple and low noise. So I might do another follow-up video later on on this and see how noisy it is for my viewers who are amateur radio operators and how loud it is. Uh, once again, I wouldn't use these for a... Uh, HF radio. I wouldn't even use these for a VHF radio. The problem with uh, these adjustable power supplies that you've also got to be very careful of is that because they do offer the voltage adjustment on the front of the power supply, you've got to be very careful that you don't bump these controls when you have your uh, test equipment or your whatever equipment actually you've got plugged into these uh, because you could end up putting rather than 12 volts, you could put up uh, 20 volts on the or 20 or 30 volts just with a small bump of the knob. If you want to find out more about Kiwi's and their wonderful range of products then I have done a couple of other videos and you might want to watch them such as the one on the KM601 digital multimeter. I'll leave a link right up here where you can click to watch those now.